So I wanted to take the opportunity, especially in these kind of contentious times, to give as much honor as possible and as with, is within our tradition to honor St. Junipero Serra. And I wanted to dedicate a good part of the homily to his life. Uh, he's the apostle to California. He's the apostle singular to California. And not only does the Catholic, our Catholic Church, honor him, Pope Francis canonized him, the first saint to be canonized on U.S. soil, Junipero Serra, when Pope Francis came to visit the United States. Not only does the church acknowledge the importance to the life of faith throughout the world, and especially in California and that whole region, all of these cities, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Sacramento, it's all because of Junipero Serra and his band of Franciscan brothers who evangelized all of that kind of west coast. Um, all of those cities were named after saints and angels and Catholic objects of devotion. But not only does the church acknowledge the life of Junipero Serra, but also the United States in its historical uh, biography in a certain sense. California, you may know, every state gets to choose two saints that they place in the United States Capitol that represent the history of each state. And California has two. I won't tell you who the other one is, but I'll tell you that one of them is Junipero Serra. That in the great patrimony in the history of the state of California, they chose a Catholic priest to represent their history. And that's very telling. And so Junipero Serra's statue is present there in the United States Capitol. Now, there's all kinds of controversy about you know, the history of his life and efforts, not just recently, but in previous years, since he was canonized to deface or to remove his statue. But I think it can be vindicated. And I think his life still has something very important and very meaningful to us today. So a few things about his life. First, Junipero Serra was a Catholic priest. The history shows that. that. That is who he is. That is his identity. So when we talk about Junipero Serra, we just have to, we can't look at him as just an ordinary man. He's a Catholic priest, the extraordinary commitment that that entails. And that separates him objectively from all the other Europeans that were coming to colonize. He's not a conquistador. There were conquistadors. And the conquistadors had their goals. They had their desires, their, their plans to make of this land what, whatever it is that they wanted. But Junipero Serra was a Catholic priest, and he saw this as fertile ground to evangelize and to bring the gospel to the world. So we have to keep that in mind. A little anecdote. Upon arriving, Junipero Serra came with a band of Franciscans, and very quickly they ended up killing one of his close friends who was a Catholic priest. And so the crime for that, the civil, Spanish civil government at that time said, okay, well, the punishment for killing a Catholic priest our little precious treasure, Catholic priest here, is capital punishment. They were going to knock out the native Indian that killed Junipero Serra's priest friend, friend who is a priest. And Junipero Serra begged, because he's a Catholic priest, he begged that they not do this, that they, as a sign of mercy, not kill the man who murdered the Catholic priest. So Junipero Serra had a very different mindset, right? He was living out of his priesthood. And he was living a very radical life of holiness. Not only that, he said, if, if let it be known, not only should you not kill the, the guy who murdered my friend, but if they killed me, he's like, I insist that the man who kills me never be murdered and never have to endure capital punishment. So there's a radical life of holiness, a radical life of forgiveness and mercy that Junipero Serra was bringing to the, to the table, to the great kind of program that was European colonization. So that's just one point. He's a Catholic priest. The second point, what did Junipero Serra do? What Junipero Serra did was he set up these missions, which you can go visit to this day. They're still standing. The architecture of these things is still standing. And there's all kinds of revisionist historians want to say, no, these things were oppressive structures, and they you know, confined the Indians to this little mission. They didn't let the Indians leave. Well, you can read it that way if you want, but the fact of the matter is that these missions that he set up were cultural oases. He offered the best that European culture had to the natives. It was the best that he had, the best that he knew is what he was offering. Art, literature, music, clothing, agricultural customs, liturgy, the worship, most importantly, the worship of God, Christ, the life of faith itself, the person of Jesus Christ in the sacraments. 
But there was also, it was also two ways, okay? It wasn't just like top down. We are Europeans, you are the natives, you learn everything from us. No, the history doesn't show that. Actually, there, I was reading this morning, and there's actually a historian who was very skeptical about Junipero Serra. And he said, no, this guy was an oppressor, just like all the other Spaniards and all these other colonizers. And they did just bad things. And this historian, when he actually looked to study the architecture of these places, he actually discovered that among these 13 missions that Junipero Serra and his band of Franciscan brothers in the 18th century established, that the lighting, the illumination of the light coming in at certain times throughout the year aligned with sacred days, that the sun poured out of the illuminations that came out in the structure of the architecture of the church aligned with days sacred to the native culture. So what does that say? That it was a two-way street, that Unipero Serra was basically, through architecture, his Franciscan brothers were trying to say that the Christ, that the God whom you worship, the sun, the natural spirits, and all those things, that God that you are worshiping in your spirituality, your native religion, that's Jesus Christ. The same language that the natives used with the illumination of the chapel, Junipero Serra was, was kind of using that as uh, Justin Martyr says, the semina verbi, the seed of the gospel planted. Yes, the sun, even the sun reveals something about the glory of Jesus Christ. And the architecture was meant to reflect that and dialogue with that culture. That's the first thing. And the second thing was that actually, I was very surprised to read this, that this, the, the first miracle, so because Pope Francis did one of his very radical things, he just pushed along the canonization. But the first miracle that was used to canonize Junipero Serra was actually a lady who was a shaman. She was like a spiritual, like, one of these spiritual figures in the native tradition. And she was also a nurse. So she went to the relic of Junipero Serra and prayed that, she, that Junipero Serra, through his intercession, cure, con, uh, acquire the, the, the cure of his daughter who was suffering from uh, cryptogenic pneumonia. And this shaman lady prayed to the relic and she believed. She believed. She had faith that Junipero Serra would do this and indeed he did. So for what that's worth, even the natives, to this day, that was 2013, but even the natives, not just of today, but of ancient times, of his own time period, also venerated Junipero Serra. Well, that's what's so ironic to me, is that when you look at his life, he was actually venerated by the natives and hated by the Spaniards, because he was constantly calling them out. He was trying to put brakes and stop them from committing cruel acts. So Junipero Serra won the hearts of the natives. So, yeah, there were, there were conflicts and things, and the, the main thing was that basically the one maybe wrinkle that can't be justified is that he used capital punishment. He himself did not use capital punishment, but under his watch there was capital punishment. But, you know, I realize it's 2020, but I teach ninth graders, and sometimes capital punishment does not seem like a too far off of a bad idea. <laughs> but in that time period it was very acceptable. And who were they punishing? People that committed theft, people that were, had concubines, people that uh, basically were starting fights. That's what they used corporal punishment for. But okay, it's not in our time period, it was maybe a little bit too cruel. But nevertheless, he was respected by the natives who had very strong devotion to him. So much so that at the time of his burial and his funeral, they just filled his whole tomb, they threw flowers, Hundreds of natives were throwing flowers at the funeral at the sign of the death of their beloved priest. Finally, uh, he gave them in their missions an oasis. It was a place of protection. It was not a place of indoctrination. It was, they came freely. They came freely. Thomas Aquinas is very clear in the Summa Theologiae that we cannot forcibly baptize people. Very, Thomas is very, very clear. It makes us different from all other religions around there. But we cannot forcibly baptize Christians. And Junipero Serra was at the same mindset that you would only come freely to the mission. And that mission was a protection against natives that were trying to destroy the weaker tribes. There were many, many native tribes. So not all of them were peaceful people. Some of them were trying to destroy each other. Colonizers were trying to displace and exile the natives. So Junipero Serra was giving them a home, these refugees, essentially. 
And finally, there were anti-Christian natives, even among the same tribe. So if there was one tribe, you know, they, the, 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 within that same tribe, they would hate on the people that turned away from their religion to accept Jesus Christ in their life. So Junipero Serra was really doing his best to provide protection from all harm, but more importantly, the salvation of their soul. That's how we need to view the missions. Why then, finally, why did Pope Francis canonize this guy that's kind of filled with somewhat controversial, shrouded in this kind of controversial history? He himself is a good man, but yeah, he was living in very difficult times. I think the singular reason why is because Junipero Serra was a missionary. He was an evangelizer, and that means so much to Pope Francis, that at the age, Junipero Serra, of 35, he left the university that he was in, the career that he had paved before him, to go out, as we said in the Psalms, to all the ends of the earth, literally the ends of the earth, California, from Spain to California, to go bring the good news to all the earth. That's why Pope Francis has canonized him. Finally, let's recall that the reason why Junipero Serra is important is not because he's like something special or more than human, but because Junipero Serra reminds us that only God is holy. We say that every Sunday. You alone are the Holy One. You alone, you alone are the Lord. Junipero Serra is but a commentary of God's holiness. Theologian Hans Urs von Balthasar is very good with this. That we, it's just a commentary, an explanation to help us, teach us, understand God's holiness. We can look at Junipero Serra and we can, as we said in the first reading, see not just Junipero Serra, but the man whom he stands for and whom he represents. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announces peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation. It was not Junipero Serra that brought salvation, but Christ in Junipero Serra. Let's ask the Lord that we too may be evangelizers in our day, in this world filled with all of its complexities, that we may have the courage that Junipero Serra had to bring faith with our creativity, with all of our hearts, to the peoples of our time.